Hi. This is a message for all of the Christians out there. There's something I've been I've had in my mind for a long time now that I really need to get out about what's going on in churches. And a lot of this has to do with the fact that, to be quite blunt, I have been hurt by churches and by Christians for much of my life. Now the people who have hurt me, they some of them they do have good intentions and they may not mean to hurt me, but they've hurt me all the same. And a lot of this hurt that I've felt, this disappointment I've felt with many churches, even though I know that churches are not perfect, neither are Christians. I see this as a problem not just with me, but with all, but in a greater sphere of things, which I believe will eventually, in our changing society, will eventually be our undoing if we do not change things and change things quickly. A lot of this hurt has has a lot to do with the fact that the, I'm sorry, the things that have hurt me are in fact tearing congregations apart, tearing denominations apart, and tearing Christian homes apart. And so some of this is done, perpetrated by individual Christians within certain churches, but a lot of it is perpetrated by leaders of churches. And if it's not perpetrated by leaders of these churches, then it is allowed to continue with the blessing of church leaders. And while each denomination these days has an issue. The main issues that I see have to do with the fact that in so many arenas, our, our need to come together as Christians and to reform as one church again is being undermined. It's being undermined in certain denominations by taking away from scripture, by taking away from the gospel, taking away from the Ten Commandments. And then a lot of what's going on is because people are adding to scripture, at like adding our own rules, our own traditions, which are not meant to be broken, but are supposed traditions that become laws basically man-made laws and out of respect for all Christians I'm not going to name denominations I'm not going to pick out one but for those who have ears let them hear let those who have eyes let them see what's going on in their own churches and eventually they'll be able to figure it out. Now, one thing the Bible tells us in the book of Revelations, which a lot of churches these days um, either don't understand or are deliberately ignoring, is when the Bible says those who add to the Bible, I will add to your woes, I will add to your punishment, and those who take away from the Bible, God will take away their, like, their rewards in the, in the days, to, in the world to come. In so many churches, unfortunately, that's what's going on, whether you realize it or not. And there are some people who will realize it, but because their church system is so big, it's hard to make changes, and those leaders do not want to make changes. And a lot of these things are going on, are happening for various reasons. For instance, you have churches that are taking away from scripture to create a more politically co correct church. A more politically correct church, a church that seeks to serve human to obey humanity 
and to please humanity and not God. A church where people go to worship out of fashion, where they're not getting the full gospel, but are just told to be good people. Then you have churches that add to scripture. They add laws, they add restrictions, they add guidelines that have no biblical basis whatsoever, no biblical basis, but, and in fact, a lot of these undermine scripture and they add these rules and they don't take them away for simple reasons, to make sure that their church and their denomination remains its power, remains its influence, and remains, yes, its wealth. Both of those are wrong. And in many cases, these things are being done in both types of churches deliberately for power, for fame, for so many things. Where It's where they would rather serve themselves and not God. They would rather serve their own egos than send the gospel out to people so that people could hear the gospel, the pure, untainted gospel. God does not care about our political correctness, nor does he care for our vestments, for our traditions. He doesn't care about those things. Now, sure, we do need to try to get the gospel out to those like who do not like who do not know God and doing it in ways that are humanitarian and that are sensitive. And yes, we do need to keep certain traditions because they enrich our worship lives, but traditions traditions that hinder the gospel, that hinder that hinder the ch all churches coming together as one and worshiping the same Christ. It is sinful. It is evil. I'm, and I'm sorry, but I'm angry, but I have built this up for a long time. And because of, and then there's a third category. And sometimes these people, they don't mean any harm, but they're doing more harm than good anyway, where they do away with unbiblical traditions and they don't care about being politically correct yet, and they stick to the scripture, yet they take the scripture in the most strict form, and I believe that it is that the Bible should be taken literally, but they do it in a way that is so restricting, they do it in a way where those who fall out of the norm are condemned. That is wrong too. I'll give you a good example. There was once in the 70s, in the LCMS, a pastor who, who taught students in the seminary that, that the world was not necessarily created in six 24-hour days so that each day could be um, could be like thousands or millions of years. And that man was disciplined and lost his authority to teach. Now, I personally believe that God is powerful enough where the world could be created in six 24-hour days. Yet, I also believe, like, um, I also acknowledge that there are certain areas in the scripture where it says that a day to God is like thousands of years to us. So, the simple fact is, who cares if he believes that it, it could have been thousands of years? Unless we get to the original Hebrew and Greek, we will not know for certain. We do know that it was created in six days. It could have been six 24-hour days. It could have been six sets of millions of years. Is that central to the gospel? No. Is it central? Is it undermining God's power? Not really. No. 
because the simple fact is God created the heavens and the earth and he created them all by himself. That is what matters. Where, like, that's what matters. It's still saying that God is powerful. However, the central teaching of all churches and the, sim and the central teaching of the gospel is John 3, 16. For, for God so loved the world that he created, that he, I'm sorry, for God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son, that whoever believed it, believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. That is the central of the gospel. That is the central Christian message. Romans 10, 9, for if you believe with your, if you believe in your heart in Jesus Christ and confess with your mouth that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. The church is supposed to be gospel-centered, not Torah-centered, not epistle-centered, but gospel-centered. When you stray from the gospel, then you have a problem. Then you start creating your own rules, making, making making church or making your faith like um too rest more restrictive than Christ wants if you take away from the scripture then you take away from your understanding of God's power and God's life for us then you get into the category of what Dietrich Bonhoeffer called cheap grace and that's what's happening on one side of the spear, you have legalism, legalism going on in the church where all you hear are laws. Do this, do that, promise this, promise that. If you don't, you're in trouble. If you don't, you're going to get disciplined. If you don't, you're going to go to hell. And then on the other side, you have cheap grace where, oh, Christ died for my sins, so I can do whatever the heck I want. No, that is not the gospel. Neither of those are the gospel. Neither of those. Stick to the gospel, churches. Because that is what's tearing our churches apart. And if we cannot stick together when the times of tribulation come, and they will come, they are coming, because more and more people in the United States of America are not taking our faith seriously or are trying to shut us up when the times of tribulation really come where it will be where we will really suffer persecution for being christians if we cannot stick together we do not stand a chance stick together stick to the gospel i mean that is why in all honesty i left my former denomination, the LCMS, and why I am, I have become, like, uncomfortable with different other denominations, even some de denominations that I've had no problem with before, because we do not stick to the gospel, because we care more about pleasing the world, we, we care more about positions of power than we do about the gospel, spreading the gospel, and sharing God's love for us. And I know I, keep, I cannot keep running from denomination to denomination, and that is not my intention, but it's like, how much longer can I allow myself to be hurt by churches like how much can I tolerate from denominations how much can I tolerate from Christians who Christians who basically like they care more about 
the law. I mean, the law is for a purpose. The Ten Commandments are for a purpose. But whenever you step outside of the Ten Commandments, then you have a problem. The second that you condemn someone for breaking a commandment, then you have a problem. Because if you're going to condemn someone for breaking one of the Ten Commandments, you should condemn yourself first. Because we have all broken the commandments. We have all broken at least, we break at least one commandment a week. If not one commandment, a day. And, and like, the thing is, sin is sin. We are such sinful creatures, we do not even know when we're sinning. Like, there are people, like, tomorrow's April 15th, tax day. There are those who feel that they're being cheated by the government, so guess what they're going to do? They are going to cheat on their taxes. Well, you know what? That's stealing. That's stealing, and that is ignoring what Christ once said. Render unto Caesar what is Caesar's, and what is, and what, and render unto God what is God's. He did not say, render unto Caesar if you feel that it's fair. He did not say, render unto Caesar if Caesar only asks for a little. He said, render unto Caesar what is Caesar's. Render unto your government what is your government. Even if the government is overtaxing us, so to speak, if your government says, give me the money, give them the money. There are those who like to gossip about other people. Guess what? You just, um, you just gave false testimony against your neighbor. There are people who, who like to, um, there are those who like to slander others, who like to, um, talk about others and insult others. Guess what? You just violated the commandment about killing. There are those who would rather stay home and watch a football game than go to church. Well, guess what you just did? You just broke probably three commandments. You broke the commandment about putting God, I mean, about um, having no other gods before you. You put, because sports is a god. It really is. Because the way Americans are, it's a god. You, um, let's see. You, um, oh, and you also um, forgot to observe the Sabbath. Like, if you know that it's a Sunday, and then, the, and, and then there's church, and you deliberately stay home to watch that game, you just violated the Sabbath. So no matter what we do, even if we don't mean it, we are going to sin. When we start to make ourselves better than us, than others, I mean, then what you're doing is wrong. And I've got another newsflash for you. There is no perfect denomination. There is no true denomination. There is one true church, there's the true faith, Christianity, but your domain, your denomination, as they say in the streets, they don't got it like that. They don't. Like, every denomination has done some sin against others, or has preached something sacrilegious, or blasphemous, whether they don't realize it. Like, there was a time in the LCMS where the belief was the LCMS was the only true church, and if you were not LCMS, you were going to hell. If you were Catholic, you were going to hell. If you were Baptist, you were going to hell. If you were Methodist, if you were Episcopalian, if you were non-denominational, Pentecostal, Pentecostal, whatever, you were going to hell. Now, let me ask you something. 
Where in the Bible does it say Lutheran? Where, pray tell, in the Bible does it say Catholic? Where in the Bible does it say Methodist? It doesn't say any of those. And let me tell you right now, if your Bible says Catholic, if it says Lutheran, if it says Methodist, Baptist, except John the Baptist, or if it says any denomination, then you don't have the right Bible. No, your Bible is corrupted and uh, you need to go get yourself a real Bible. But what I am saying is, and I'm sorry for my rant, but I needed to get it out. What I am saying is, there is one church, there is one gospel, there is one Christian message. And everything else, that if it's in the Bible, it's part of the, of the Christian message. But the central part of the Christian message is the gospel. Churches, stick to the gospel. If, you've, if you have removed certain things because they're not political, politically correct, yet they're part of the gospel, they're part of the scripture, bring them back. If you are adding traditions and laws and, um, and, and adding anything that is unbiblical, get rid of it. Our churches must be purged. That is the only way we will be able to come together as one body and survive the tribulation, to survive the days of persecution that are coming. Now, I am, I'm going to be honest with you. The, in the Middle East right now, in the Middle East, in parts of North Africa, parts of Africa, and parts of South Asia, Christians these days are really being persecuted. Persecuted like never before. And on a wide scale, on a wide scale, like the only time these Christians have ever been more persecuted is during the times of the early church. People are being killed for their faith in masses. People are having their churches burned down. Pastors are being killed. Or in Iran, pastors are being locked up. Now, in those cases, they would have to be really stupid to have such strict rules dividing each other. They would have to be so really stupid to not stick to anything but the gospel because they are in hot water. They would have to stick together for their survival. So I'm pretty sure in, in these countries, Catholic, Protestant, Orthodox, whatever, for the most part, for them, must be like colloquial terms. But colloquial terms are something like that because if they could not stick together as one body, if they could not learn to agree with each other, then they would not be surviving as they are now. Like they are in severe persecution and but those who are still in these countries they're surviving they managed to survive because they realize that there's just one message so the way I see it is I'm gonna be blunt I'm gonna be blunt if your leaders are are basic if your leaders are being separatists then you need to talk to them. You need to talk some sense into them. If your leaders are taking things away or are taking scripture out of context, you need to talk to them. You really do. Because the way I see it is that eventually there will come a time where any church that does not intend to stick together, does not intend to be one part, one church, one, um, 
like if they did not come together to be, to Christ, Christendom as a whole because they care too much about they care too much about um, being politically correct, being accepted by secular society, or they care too much about their man-made rules so that they can remain their power and control over their adherents. Eventually, those churches are going to have to be cut off because then they will become, in the times of tribulation, they will become like cancer to all of Christianity. And one thing about cancer is that if it is not cut off, if the cancer is not cut off, then if the limb, the cancerous limb is not cut off, then the cancer will spread to the rest of the body and overpower it. So if you feel that your church is a potential or is already a cancer to the rest of Christianity, you've got some choices to make. You could either try to rally for changes to be made, get your point across, tell your congregation to get back to scripture and only scripture, or it may, uh, in, I know it will be especially difficult, especially if you have, if you have family within these denominations, but it may be time to find another denomination. It may be time for that. Because when you have enough, when so many people in a church are not interested in change or don't know how to face their leaders for change, then the best thing to do, as scripture would say, is to dust your feet and move on. And eventually, if enough people leave that denomination for others, if those leaders, and if the rest of the congregation, or if the rest of the denomination are wise, they will pay attention. They will ask questions. They will reflect on what they've been doing and make those changes. And if not, then, what can I say? I, all I, I, I just pray that eventually these churches will realize what they're doing and how it's affecting the rest of Christianity and how displeased Christ is with them and will repent of their ways and stick to what's true. That is my prayer. And I ask that you pray this with me. Dear Lord, I ask that you cleanse us of our sin. I ask that you let your Holy Spirit dwell within us so that we, we may know what is true, so that we can only stick to what is true, stick to your word, and to do away with all else and anything that's contrary to your word. We pray for our leaders that they may come to see your light and that they may make positive changes for their church. And Lord, we ask that you will eventually allow us to come together as one again so that these sad divisions will decrease and diminish. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.